Welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be unpacking the final question from General Maths 2020's Paper 2, the complex paper on annuities and perpetuities. So let's get straight into it. A couple save for their retirement by making the same monthly payments for 20 years into an account that earned 4.2% per annum compounded monthly. At the age of 65, the couple retired and used all their savings to purchase a perpetuity with an interest rate of 5.76% per annum compounded monthly, paying $3,600 each month. How much did they save for their um, each month to prepare for their retirement? There is a lot going on in this question. That's why I built it slowly. You can see there are actually two parts to the question. So let's have a little look about that. We're gonna use the Polya process, C plan do check to unpack this question. It was worth seven marks, so it was a heavily awarded mark on the particular paper. And being the last question, it was one that a lot of students actually ran out of time for and didn't give it their best shot, which is unfortunate. Also, a lot of students do struggle with annuities and perpetuities, and that was very evident in the way that the marks ended up being allocated to some students. So it's really important that you are taking your time to think about what's actually going on in this question. Let's look at all that key information. So there is two parts to the question. What happened in the first 20 years while they were saving up for retirement? So I'm gonna mark that in gold. And that's an annuity. So when we look at that question, we can see some key words there. Same monthly payments being made month after month after month for 20 years. So that tells us because there's a regular payment going in and that it's compounded, then that means it's an annuity. So that's the first information that we can spot. Also, I've got some other information. I've highlighted that for you in green. So that's the next part after the 20 years. They're now retired. What are they doing next? So after those 20 years, they've actually got a perpetuity going on. So they had the annuity first, and then they've moved it into a perpetuity. So that's really important. So now we also need to do some planning. We've, got, we've broken up the question. We can see there's two different parts to the question, two different parts to the lifetime of their investment. So we need to work out what formulas we actually need for the information that we've been given. So looking again at the annuity, we know it's an annuity, we've got a choice of two. We've got the future value formula on our formula sheet or the present value formula. This is the one that students get the most confused, what do I do now? Well, we choose the future value formula because payments are being added in. So it's like a straight annuity, we wanna know how much we have in the future. So that's a future value formula. And so writing down the formula that you actually needed and selecting that formula was worth a mark. Um, if you chose the present value formula, you could, still could have earned some marks on this question, uh, but you would have lost the mark here for choosing the correct formula. Then after the 20 years, we've now got that perpetuity going on. You're not provided a formula for a perpetuity on your formula sheet. And formulas do vary from textbook to textbook. I use the Jacaranda textbook, which uses the formula A equals M over I. But you might be using another textbook and the variables will be slightly different, but the concept is the same. So correcting, correctly selecting the formula for a perpetuity out of your brain was worth another mark. Now that we've done some planning, we're gonna look at the different variables we need for both of our formulas. And it's always a good idea to state your variables before you jump straight into working. So for the annuity, you can see I've got four variables there. I've got A, which is the future value, M, which is the payment, I, which is the interest rate per period, and N, which is the number of compounding periods. So I'm actually going to do the calculations here. I don't know what M is. That's what I'm trying to work out. How much have they been putting in every month to that particular investment? I know that it's gonna go for 20 years and it's gonna be compounded monthly. So 20 times 12 is 240. I don't know what the amount is that they've saved either. It's also an unknown. So A is a question mark at this point. But I can convert the interest rate to an interest rate per compounding period, which is taking the 4.2, dividing that by 100 to turn it into a decimal, and then dividing by 12 to get a rate of 0.0035. So even if you didn't really know what to do, if you'd simply stated your variables for N and for I, you would have got another mark. So it's quite possible if you're running out of time at the end of a paper to do things like select a formula and state your variables for that formula and you're already two out of seven marks on your way home. Now let's have a look at the perpetuity. 
Well, with our formula, we've got three variables there as well, A, M, and I. Now the A and the M here will not necessarily be the A and the M for the previous formula, so that's something to be aware of. We know that the amount is unknown to us here too. We don't know how much they've got to be paying their perpetuity out of, but we're told the payment they're getting every month is 3,600, and we've got an interest rate there as well, 5.76 divided by 100, and now divided by 12 again to convert that into a monthly interest rate. That gets us our third mark. So now we've got all the information we need for the perpetuity to actually calculate how much they started that perpetuity with. So this is going to become our value at the end of the 20 years of saving. So if we just take a little step backwards, this couple puts money in every month, very faithfully for 20 years to save up for retirement. Then they've got this big lump sum of money at the end of their working life. And then they're going to put that into a new investment, the perpetuity, and that perpetuity is going to pay them now and the same amount every month. And the idea of the perpetuity is, let's say they've saved a million dollars over their working life, that million dollars is never going to change its value. It's going to grow by compound interest, and then that interest gets paid out to the couple every month. So they're basically keeping that base solid and living off the interest. Okay, so we're going to work out what A is, and then we're going to use that in our annuity formula to work out M. So it's a bit of backwards working to work out what they're paying in every month from the very beginning. So after 20 years, the perpetuity, if we substitute these variables into the formula, we've got 3,600 divided by the interest rate, and we get an amount of $750,000. So that's how much this couple saved for 20 years. It's the value of the perpetuity that they're going to be paying their investment out of. And that was worth a mark for determining the value of the perpetuity. So now we've got our value for A. Now we've got everything we need to find the payment. So we simply substitute that into our formula and we're going to um, write that down like that. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It's very tempting to start to just um, rearrange algebra and go a bit crazy there, but why don't we simplify what's in brackets first? Okay, so what I've done here is I've added one to 0 0.0035, which gives me 1.0035. Let's raise that to the power of 240 and I get this number 2.313. Don't take that off your calculator. You want that with as many decimal places as possible. You're going to subtract one from that, and then you're going to divide that by 0, 0, 0.35. So what you're going to end up with is all of that information that was in the brackets comes to this value of 375.13 with lots of decimal places. That's what the dot, dot, dot means. I'm not going to write all those decimal places on my paper because that's tedious and time consuming, but keep it on your calculator. My last step is to divide that number from both sides of the equation and I'm going to get the payment is equal to $1,999.29. I get a mark for determining the payment. Now even if I had used the wrong formula, I determ determined the right amount for my perpetuity for example, but I've used the present value formula. I've come up, I won't get marks um, for picking the wrong formula earlier on, but I will get a mark here for determining a payment. Okay, there is also an additional mark worth, um, awarded in this question for logical organisation and communication. So that's a range of things. It's things like making sure that your money has dollar signs in front of it. It's like having two decimal places. Remembering money has two decimal places for the cents, not 15 decimal places or one decimal place. Okay, let's have a quick logic check now. So C plan do, we just did the do, now it's time to check our work. A lot of students think to check their work, all they've got to do is re-enter all the numbers back into the calculator and see if they get the right answer. And that's not a bad idea, but there's also some logic checks we want to do here. So firstly, did it make sense for them to save $750,000 after 20 years? Yes, it does. You would expect if you've been putting away an amount of money every month for 20 straight years, that you'd end up with a lot of money at the end probably not $50 million, thinking um, logically in there, they've saved $750,000, that's a decent amount to retire on for a couple, so yeah, that's a logical amount. Yes, it does make sense. Also think about the payment. Would it be reasonable for a couple to save approximately $2,000 a month and put that away from retirement? Well, yes, it would. If you're looking at a couple here, it's not $20,000 that they're saving a month, it's not $200 that they're saving a month. It's a logical amount, $2,000. You would expect if you're putting away that size of money that it would grow to something sizable with compound interest after 20 years. So yes, that's logical as well. Also a good idea to check your communication. 
So have you used things like subheadings to separate the working for your annuity and your perpetuity? That's kind of important um, because we've got a lot of, we've got basically two stages of working that we're doing here. It's important to communicate when you're moving from one formula to the next. Um, so yes, we did that in our work. Have we communicated our information with a dollar sign? Yes, we have. And with the, a statement at the end to communicate our final answer. Um, one of the things I, I, I do see with students when they're working with questions like this is that the working is all higgled piggledy all over the place. And sometimes they do the logic check and realize they've made a mistake and they forget to cross the wrong work out. It's really important that you cross your incorrect working out. And if you're starting again, make sure it's clearly crossed out so that your new work is included. You can't hedge your bets and do one with the present value formula and one with the future value formula and leave both of them there because the first thing you do will end up getting marked. And you've got a 50-50 chance of that being the future value formula, but it's a good idea to cross out the incorrect working. Also, did you show all your working to calculate those monthly interest rates? Well, yes, we did. Okay, so here's a quick summary of our mark allocations. We could have got quite a few marks, even if we weren't 100% sure of what we were doing. So we've calculated that monthly interest rate correctly. We recalled the perpetuity rule. We worked out a price for the perpetuity. We've stated some more variables. We've used the right formula, the future value formula. We came up with a payment and we communicated and organized. So lots of marks for this particular question. I know everyone hates the annuity questions, but really you could have got almost half marks just by writing a formula and stating your variables. So very important to do that when you're starting a question, when you're um, planning your work. Well, I'd like to say um, a very big welcome to our subscribers today and to, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us. If you found this video helpful, tell someone, show it to your teacher, show a friend, like, subscribe and hit the notifications button and why not follow McClutchy Maths on Facebook and Instagram. It's a great way to stay in touch and get additional support. You can also email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com if you have any questions. Thank you so much for joining me. We've finished paper two for general maths for 2020. Do stay tuned for new videos coming your way very shortly. I'm Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Maths. Have a wonderful day.